What's up, football fans, and welcome to week two of the Saturday Pigskin exclusively right here on the OH Report. My name is Brian Skrosky. Today's program is brought to you by Time and Money Saver, and man, what a loaded house we have today. So much talent in this one room, including Mansfield, T.Y. Tigers all-time legend, Effie James, Brian Harder, over 30 years experience covering sports in this area for WMFD and ESPN Radio, and the head coach of Shelby Football, Eric Will, all joining us today. And gentlemen, week two of the season, we talked last week about how pivotal week one can be. You want to kick off the season on the right foot. Week two, though, if you're coming off of a loss, also coming off of a win, how much difference does it make looking to either rebound versus going to 2-0? and Well, I think, you know, if you're coming off of a loss, uh, it's important that you get a you get a good feel for how your kids are going to respond to a win or a loss so as a coach you got to step in that next week of practice is going to be a little bit more fine-tuned you're going to be really be able to pinpoint your weaknesses of the week before and and i think you see a better product in week two than you do in week one from all the teams whether they win or lose you always see a better product because you get a chance to really pinpoint your flaws and weaknesses of week one I think one of the things that most coaches look at, or actually two things they're looking at, is they're looking at either winning their conference or making sure they're ready for the playoffs. And usually those first two games are not conference games. So let's say you come out one and one, you still can sell to your team, okay, we have these things that we can fix, and then we can still make a run at our conference and then also at the playoffs. So these first two games are almost, I don't want to say dress rehearsals, but it's a good way for you to gauge if you're going to be a contender in your conference or if you have a chance to make it to the postseason. To piggyback off of that, Coach, uh, how much improvement do you want to look from week one to week two with your team? Or is it, like he mentioned, more of a dress rehearsal and you're still kind of figuring out what you got? Yeah, absolutely. I think that I agree with both of what these guys said. I think for us, um, you know, when you feel like you can be a playoff team, I think that you have to figure out what your strengths and weaknesses are. And, and sometimes those are hard to see when you – you know, when you have those two or three scrimmages. So when you have the ability to actually get out of the dress rehearsal stage and actually get on the field where it counts, that's very, very important. And then the non-conference as well is extremely important because it does set up your set up your playoff positioning. If you don't show well, if you come out of that, you know, hurt, injured, those types of things, it's really hard to, to, to hit your conference, you know, feeling confident about being able to run through there. Obviously, in our situation, we're not in a conference this year. So, you know, we're looking at this as literally every single game is for playoff positioning. If, if we feel like we can continue to grow and be good enough to get there. Well, your team looking to go to 2-0 and last night, as were a few other area teams. Let's see how all the teams right here in Richland County did last night, right here on the Richland Runback. Here we go, let's begin over at StarTech Stadium right here in Mansfield where the Rams are looking to end the program's 18-game losing streak. Brian Harder, you're a former Madison Ram. How bad does that hurt just hearing that number? It's hard to watch when you see how they have struggled over the last several years and you look back to the 90s when they were a playoff team every year and to see this program struggle like this, it's extremely difficult. And the Rams fell behind early in this one. This touchdown right here made it 20 zip in favor of the Vikings. And that was a sneaky little jet sweep direct snap. Don't see that very often. It wasn't all bad though for the game green here in the friendly confines as taking this one all the way back to get Madison on the board. 85 yard return, it's Luke Hess. So at least some bright spots. Nothing like special teams to get you going when your team is struggling, even if that's the only score you have on the night. It is something to build on for the Rams for next week. It was the only score for the Rams. 42-7, they get beat. No points in the second half of this game. Rams 0-2 now. They've been outscored 90-15. The T.Y. Tigers on the road up at Sandusky. Perkins looking to avoid a 0-2 start after Norwalk surprised them a bit last week. And let's just jump right into the good stuff. We're going to fast forward all the way to the fourth quarter. It's Angelo Gross from one yard out. This put the T.Y. Tigers on top 14-7. It looked like they were going to hold on in regulation 
for the win, but here come the Pirates. Just 24 seconds to play, and Dequeez Clinton with the touchdown grab, and we are going into overtime, and the fans there up at Perkins, they're loving it, they're fired up. But the opening possession of overtime, this is just super gross, guys. Angelo to Elijah, he clocks the ladder. Mansfield Sr. goes up by a score, but the Pirates would answer right back. J. Andre Jackson, 19 yards to Pater, is going to send us into overtime number two, where we pick things up with Angelo Gross. He's going to scramble and find a wide open Armin Hughley. What do you guys think about Angelo, a quarterback this season? Well, I think he's making the most of an opportunity that he has, and, and he's just a tremendous athlete. And because of that, you don't have to be a great quarterback when you're a tremendous athlete. He's in the Tiger staff is usually. They're using very, very well and getting the most out of that position with him playing. That touchdown toss right there. Tied things up in triple overtime, but oh, the third phase of the game, special teams wins it for the Tigers. They block the PIT and they go on to win at 35 to 34 to get their first victory of the season. Let's go out to Lucas now where the Cubs were looking for a 2-0 start hosting Centerburg and this team man what a run Lucas has been on over what about the last seven eight years they have been incredible and you look at a small school like this and the class that they have had coming through the last couple of years they're putting some talent on the field you want to talk about a stud how about Jeb Grover 70 yard touchdown scamper this kid was huge all night we were talking in the third quarter what do you have three carries for what Three carries, 131 yards in the third quarter alone. Woo! He went for 254 scores on the ground, over 400 rush yards for the Tigers. But we're going to show some defensive plays because, Effie James, I know you love these. And you got to love the way that the Cubs stood up. Centerberg scored a couple times in the first half. Nothing late in the game. Absolutely. You got to love defensive play and the defensive push from the line. That starts everything. And the defensive linemen really don't get enough credit in high school football. They really, really, they, they make the tempo or force the tempo of your football game. So when you can get a good push like Lucas does, it usually leads to good defensive play. 42-14, the Cubs a big winner. They get to ring the victory bell out there in Lucas. The Ontario Warriors coming off of an upset win over Lexington in week one, taking on Highlands, a team they haven't beat since 1987. And that streak's going to continue. Fighting Scots ran it 66 times in this game for 375 yards. Here's Jack Weaver covering 43 of them all the way to his happy place on the first drive. And then the very first offensive possession for the Warriors. It's a pick six. Brock Bailey makes it 12 nothing, and it was 18-0 in a hurry, folks. Luckily for Ontario fans, they got this little guy named Owen Hatfield. And he happened right here in a major way, taking it all the way into the end zone, 70 yard touchdown reception. And this guy's listed at about 5'3", 130 pounds, but man, can he move. Coach, you had one of these last year in Brady Hill. How explosive is it to have a little guy that's got some shake to him? Well, what it does is it creates matchup problems because when you can get a guy like that with the ball in space, it's obvious to see watching him there run down the sideline. It's hard to find guys that can tackle him in space. High school kids struggle with tackling anyways. When you get a good tad elusive, very tough to game plan against. Uh, that made it 18-16, but then a whole bunch of Scott scores after that. They roll 47-16 clock in the Warrior at their place as they fall to 1-1 one and one on the season. And then finally, we save the best for last. It is Shelby at Lexington. The Whippets looking to move to 2-0 on the season. And coach, going into this game playing at Lex, how do you like that environment? Yeah, we, you know, we really like this game going into it. It was 18-17 all the time. We had told our kids that, you know, we, our, that we met Lexington's backs were against the wall. You know, they were going to come out fighting. And, and we knew that. And, uh, you know, I give Coach Gerhardt and his staff credit because their kids came out. They were really aggressive, played really, really hard. Very impressed with their game plan. I thought they executed at a very high level. That's Uriah Schwemley there with an interception early. And then Owen Fisher taking it into the end zone for the early lead. you got to love what you see from this kid. He runs really hard for a small guy. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Owen's kind of, he's continuing to grow. He's a sophomore. He's, gonna, he's only going to get better. We think he can be the next great back at Shelby. And, uh, you know, he's put in the time and effort to do that. Here's Caden Berry ripping off a touchdown run for Big Lex. Looking like a fidget spinner in there. You see him spinning off a couple of tackles. That was pretty sweet. And then Cade Stover. This is the closest thing I think you can see to like Bigfoot in a high school football uniform. <laughs> Look at how he just throws these young kids to the ground. It's not fair. It's really not. 
They were able to stop though, number eight, they get it back, and here's Owen Fisher, another explosive run. You know, Owen does a really nice job of finding little creases. You know, that allows us to, you know, it allows us to be a little bit sloppy at times at the point of attack when Owen can find those creases. Touchdown toss, Tanner Stevens. 20 straight points here for the Shelby Whippets as they led 27 to 10. McGuire Albert right here. This is the run that made it that score. And now we are gonna take you to late in the fourth quarter. Jacob Depperschmidt's gonna hook up with Josh Aiello from 16 yards out. And all of a sudden we got a game 27-24. Were you sweating it a little bit, Eric? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we uh, we were in man and uh, they got a young corner under, you know, you know, kind of teaching him the difference between the, uh, the zone coverage and the man concept there. So Eric, your team holds on to win 27-24. What would you say was your overall takeaway? What did you really talk to the kids about after the game? Well, the positives were I like the resolve. I like the fact that we have a young group of kids that continue to compete. They played all the way to the end. Uh, you know, we made the plays in the moments when we had to make those plays. Um, the, the, the things that we talked about at film today were, uh, you know, we gotta, we've got to be better at the point of attack. We can't throw the ball 29 times and continue to win. That, that's just not a recipe for most high schools, specifically us, to win a football game. So we've got to be stronger there. Uh, turnovers are a major issue right now. We're putting the ball on the ground too much uh, through a couple of interceptions as well. Just decision making. And then on defense, uh, our, our secondary is extremely young, but uh, but that, that we don't want that to be an excuse. We we go you know we uh, there wasn't one formation really even one play that we didn't have on film. So our kids you know we, we were expecting them at a very high level to get the checks in, get them right, get lined up right, and those things were a little bit of a concern. But but they're all fixable things. Gentlemen, what would you say is your top takeaway from these Richland County teams over a couple of weeks? We'll start with you, Brian. What, what's your just collective thoughts right now? Well, I just take a look at a team like Shelby, and I think that they're in a position where they can make another playoff run. The thing that might hurt them is their schedule and some of the teams that they're not going to get a lot of second-level points because of the opposition that they're playing. But if they can continue to play at the level that they are, those things can kind of um, take care of themselves. And also the Lucas Cubs are putting together another season where it looks like they could make a deep run in the postseason as well. Yeah, my, my takeaway is I think there's a lot of teams that you really, you may not know what you're going to get from week to week, sure. from good or bad. Agreed. And as a, you know, as a, someone who watches sports, that's great because it's, all the games are going to be competitive. As, as coaches, that's not so good. But as, as you know, viewers, we enjoy seeing that. And there's parity in high school uh, football, at least in this area, from what I can tell. And, but I also like the improvements and adjustments that I've seen from week one to week two in, in a lot of these teams. And, and you're going to continue to see that. And to me, that's the beauty of high school sports, just the improvement of young people getting better week after week. And just real quick, because I know how close your ties are with Chilke Bradley and the Tigers program, mm -hmm. getting a win like that, not falling into an 0-2 hole, like how, how much bigger is Chilke's smile today? It means everything, <laughs> trust me. You know, being, being in those positions and being a Tiger and being a Tiger coach, it is, it's, it's tough when you get in a hole because, you know, some of the kids, and not just Mansfield kids, a lot of kids, confidence is very, very fragile. And if you get into an 0-2 hole, it doesn't matter what comes next. You know, now you got to feed their confidence and try to teach them on top of trying to give them the, the will to think I could win, we could win the next game. Because two games, 20% of your season, and you go 0-2, there's going to be plenty of kids that, that they don't want to admit it, but they'll turn it in. And you, you know, he just avoided that. I don't care by what margin you avoid that and you can build from a one-point win. And for the Tigers, they had a prime time performer on Friday night, as did a few other area teams. Let's take a look at this week's Friday Night Phenoms brought to you by MWD Logistics. Here we go, Phenom number one, and it is a member of the TY Tigers junior quarterback Angelo Gross showing out three total touchdowns and just a freak athlete as the moving pictures here obviously display. As a left-handed quarterback, man, it, it's, it's different, it's tough, you know, but it shows his overall athleticism. The kid is, you know, just an amazing athlete. And I think being a quarterback is just kind of one of those extras that he could do. If they put him at any position on the field, he's gonna succeed. I thought he was very efficient. He only threw for 44 yards, six of 13. 
but he had two touchdown tosses, and he did a lot of damage with his legs. 12 carries, 103 yards and a score. So he's a guy that, you know, if you're going to try to keep him in the pocket, he can get out and run, and he's dangerous with his legs. And you can see there, making him play on his own, scrambles all the way to the right, comes back to the left, and you don't get much more open than that gentleman right there. And this guy, tons of running room. That should say 250 rush yards, four touchdowns, and the big plays that Jeff Grover brings every single week, ripping off runs of 70 and 59. I mean, that's just a regular Friday for this dude. Well, and you look at what he did on that first highlight right there that you showed. He blew right through the defensive line, a lot of missed tackles. He's so strong, and he has a nice level of attack when he is hitting the line, and great vision for a running back. And then look at the speed as he gets by all those defenders. He's a tough guy to bring down. And then playing a little defense too, Effie coming up with an INT and also in the red zone, big play. All around ball player, I love all around football players. They're hard to find in high school football, but he certainly is one of them. Warriors did not come up with a win, but Owen Hatfield certainly did. He won over the student section. They were chanting his name over and over. This little guy has so much wiggle to his game. He's just hard to bring down. He's only about five foot three. Well, that's just it. He's listed at five three. So you know what that means. He's about five two, maybe five one. But yes, a lot of power in that little body and a lot of speed. You can see here he's got pretty good hands, able to get free into space, take it into the end zone. He also had another touchdown on a kick return called back. He could have had three total touchdowns. That little guy right there, number 11, a huge phenom for the Warriors right now. And our last one, Coach Will, this guy should look pretty familiar to you. McGuire Albert, another impressive performance. 270 yards through the air, a touchdown on the ground, and a couple tosses as well. Yeah, McGuire had a good game for us. There were only really two or three bad decisions that we had, and we graded him out today. Uh, you know, he continues to improve. He's very, very efficient. Uh, believe it or not, he actually grades out even a little bit higher than, uh, you know, even Brennan did last year through the first two games as far as playing. So, you know, we're, uh, we're really excited about him. He's doing a great job leading our team. I think that the biggest improvement that you see that you can see on the field, but but it is going to be the, the leadership behind that. The kids are playing well with him. They understand that uh, you know, he puts in the time and he's, you know, he's, he's not just talk, he's action. And Coach, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this at all. We featured you throughout the summer, a documentary, a four-part series uh, that we called Dog Days of Summer. What was it like for you to see kind of the day-to-day -day play out on video? What was some of the response that you heard from uh, parents, uh, other people in the community? Uh, just that, just that, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they don't, just, I don't think most people realize what goes on at practice, how intense it is, how focused, just the mental grind that it is. You know, these guys understand that, you know, when you're, you know, as a coach, it's, it's tough to get 14 to 18 year olds to, to focus. Social media, Instant gratification, that micro, microwave society, we're asking them to buy into a lifestyle where you're not going to necessarily see instant gratification. Uh, you know, when you first start your 10 camp days and then your two-a-days, um, you know, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to see the forest through the trees. And, and, you know, the day in and day out grind, how it builds upon each other. And, uh, you know, I think that the parents were able to see that, the community was able to see that, our administration was, was uh, you know, they, they thought it was great that uh, they were able to see kind of even the kids' side of it, how the kids were joking around. And it's not, you know, it's business, but there's also a lot of fun that the kids have, which is kind of where that brotherhood forms that, that, that could be as coaches. And, and these guys as players understand. Top takeaway from uh, the first two weeks of the season, if you just want to package it up, put a little bow on it, what would you say it is for you, Mr. James? Um, really, the, the play of teams like Shelby, who, and, and I wanted to ask Coach Will, but just because of the, you know, the carryover from last year, and, and I always said when I watched you play, the second team from Shelby probably could have won seven or eight games on your schedule. They played so much last year. How much do you feel like that is helping those guys now that are playing for you? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair assessment and fair evaluation by you. I think that there, there's no substitute for Friday Night Lights. I mean, a lot of those guys were playing Saturday mornings and, uh, because they've got things they're working on as well. And, and that's, the best, that's the beneficial thing about that running clock is you can throw the ball without caring because that clock's going to continue to run. Um, you know, with, with, without worrying about stopping it and hurting someone, you know, someone's feelings and why are they throwing the ball? Everybody can just kind of run their stuff. Uh, but yeah, very, you know, extremely valuable for our program. And I think that we are seeing dividends from that this year. Top takeaway, Mr. Harder? I'm going to be watching a team like Mansfield Senior. And you started this off by talking about the importance of game one and game two. They could have easily gone into next week down 0-2, <clears throat> excuse me, but they're one and one. 
and that can be a huge factor for them going forward in Chokey Bradley selling them on. <clears throat> we can still do a lot of good things this season, and you saw the two things that we were able to do on the road that take away really week one, but we were able to stay in Sandusky and battle through a triple overtime game and come home with a win, and he's gonna be able to sell them now going forward that this is gonna be a lot better season than maybe even you guys thought that we could have and carry that positive uh, momentum into their home opener next week. Yeah, and I feel like if Mansfield Senior can just get through these first five weeks with the quarterback that they got waiting in the wings, the transfer Cam Todd from Ontario, it could be a pretty special season for the T.Y. Tigers. All right, a special thank you always to my guests, Effie James, Brian Harder, and Coach Will, the first coach's corner that we had. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you right here next Saturday on the Saturday Pigskin. You gotta get into the river.